I've tried so many diets since I was 20 years old. I've been dieting off and on, got good results from different diets. But one thing those diets did not teach me, it didn't teach me how to live a healthy lifestyle and how to see myself as a healthy person. See, I never changed my self image up here. This time, this time is different because I renewed my mind first. This time, I'm the vision queen. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Martha. Welcome back to Living La Vida Carney. I have such a special treat for you guys today. I have a special guest, and she goes by Miss Lady Tay. I love that name. Miss Lady Tay, welcome to Living La Vida Carney. Hi, Martha. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. To oh, join I'm you. so excited. Yes, me too. I, I saw your Instagram page and I love your videos. I love your walk and talks. I love what I saw. <laughs> I was so inspired. And instead of looking at all of them, I was like, I need to have you on because <laughs> you're just, you're, you seem like a woman of faith, Yes, but ma also I wanted to hear your story live and get my honest reaction to all of your full story. And so thank you so much. This is Miss Lady Tay's first interview. So I'm so excited about this. I'm excited too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself to start off? Where are you from and uh, what do you do? I'd be glad to. Well, I am from Atlanta, Georgia, born and raised. Nice. And um, I live in the outskirts of Atlanta now. So, you know, when people say Atlanta, we're really talking about like the whole metro area. Anyway, um, I was born and raised in Atlanta. Um, I, um, had a childhood of, um, a loving family, but I did go through a lot of, um, obesity. I think I was, I was first got heavy at age eight. And, um, that was a battle that I faced mm -hmm. my whole life. <laughs> There's a lot of children now more than ever that yeah. are going through obesity in childhood. Yeah. Tell us about that. And during the time when I was obese as a child, it wasn't a lot of kids yet that was obese. So it was hard, traumatic in, in uh, elementary school and middle school, dealing with the fact that, you know, I was the biggest one, the last to be picked for different things and stuff like that. I was able to cope with it a little more in high school once I got into um, marching band and, you know, was able to find some talents that, you know, people did it, get um, admire, you know, with me being really good with the clarinet and marching band and stuff. So I had some breakthrough as far as, you know, people kind of liking me for what I could do. But nice. as far as like, uh, you know, dates and, you know, dealing with um, obesity back then, it wasn't very popular at all to be the big girl. You know, you were always considered the fun friend. <laughs> right. So, yeah. You're I, the girlfriend of the girls that are dating. Yeah, it, exactly. Yes. <laughs> I was too. <laughs> yeah. So you can relate. So oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, that's been my life. You no know, anyone, I, right? besides that, you know, I, I had a, a 
wonderful childhood with my parents and everything, but you know, some things that they couldn't understand. You know how that is, you know. But that's been, you know, mostly my life. I love music, I love art, and I like making things with my hands. I like to sew. I actually have a toy store where I create um, doll clothes for my Etsy and eBay store. Wow. That I do, along with my ministry. So, um, yes. You're a well rounded person. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I thank the Lord awesome. for that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, tell me a little bit more about what led to the obesity. What kind of foods? What was the environment in your home? Were you the only one that was overweight? What, what did that look like? Yes. Well, um, growing up, my family, you know, not just, you know, my intermediate, my immediate family, but like pretty much my whole family, we battle with obesity. That's like uh, something that most of us battle with, you know, all my aunties and my grandmother um, all battle with obesity. I grew up very close to my grandmother and um, she had some um, obesity um, diseases. She had uh, diabetes and heart disease. I believe the diabetes led her to the heart disease and kidney disease. And, um, you know, she ate a lot of um, fried foods and you know, junk food and stuff like that. And my, my mother, she, she likes sweets as well. And she's a diabetic herself. Now she's not really big, but she's sort of like what you would think is a toffee because oh. she have diabetes, but she's not big. She's actually the size that I am now. She never really been big, big, but my grandmother was, her mother was. Explain to people what a toffee is. A tofi is someone who is um, who has fat on the inside, but not on the outside. Right, and that's something that me and Martha learned, I'm sure, from uh, listening to people like Dr. Ken. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, I was, like, I was shocked when I learned yes. how many skinny diabetics there are. Yes, yes, and my mom is one of them. Mm. I I read even a study that there was like a new record of skinny diabetics in India. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And you're thinking, but they look so good. They do. How could it be possible? So yeah. it's possible. It is very possible. And, you know, so with me and my sister, I, I have, uh, I have two other sisters and a stepsister. Well, my sister that was uh, living with me growing up, she was thin all the way up to um, high school. But me, I gained the weight from elementary school and it started from a sweet tooth. Uh, you know, growing up with my grandmother, you know, she, you know how they give you treats and stuff, you know, yes. we, we ate sweets and stuff together. And, you know, I was always That's how like, they live on you. Yeah, I was like her little shadow and everything. I spent a lot of time with her, you know, even stayed with her for a while. And um, when I was going to church with her, Church always have potluck dinners and all kinds of treats and junk food. And um, when I was in the church, I was in the children's choir. And um, the children's choir is called the Starlights. And we did a fundraiser uh, a couple of years. And my whole family was in that church because our great grandparents was uh, members of that church. So all my family got together and helped me sell the chocolate bars for the <laughs> fundraiser to help me become Miss Starlight. Yes. Well, I was Miss Starlight 
for uh, 1985-86. Well, guess who got most of the chocolate when we <laughs> turned around and bought a lot of the chocolate so I could win? All right. Yes. It was us. So I You're like I'm the winner <laughs> of the chocolate, okay? And, you were the uh, chocolate queen. Yes, yeah, so we ate a lot of that chocolate, and you know, I have to admit, I ate a lot of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had cavities and stuff as a kid, so I had some dental issues. But um, when the weight really picked up was when I was my family moved out to the outskirts of Atlanta in an area where it wasn't really many black people and we moved into a neighborhood where I was the only black child wow. and you know I didn't have any friends so I was you know already vulnerable there uh -huh. but um when we moved to it um it was hard I was in second grade and um I did meet some people in the circle. I'm not going to say the street, but it was called the circle. Okay. Okay. And I, I met a girl, she, her and I became best friends and everything. And, um, there was some boys in the neighborhood that, you know, I went and rode my bike with and very active. I was very active, but, um, one summer, during that summer, I thought these boys was my friends, but apparently not, or maybe someone influenced them in their family because we were friends, I thought. But one day I went to their house to ask, did they want to come outside and play and ride our bikes like we normally do? Okay. And um, they opened the door and threw pepper in my eyes and, you know, wow. told me to go home you in oh no i don't want to say the word but y'all know what sure. i mean the, the derogatory for you know what they call black people yes ma'am and um that traumatized me i went home crying with pepper in my eyes and told my dad and you know he was very upset and told me don't go outside and play no more so mm -hmm. i didn't go outside and play so i stayed in the house and played with my nintendo uh, the original Nintendo Mario Brothers. Oh, yes. And I'm an expert. Yes. So, you know, the, the original Super Nintendo. Yes. I mean, the original Nintendo was Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. And they became my best friends along with little Debbie Snack Cakes. Yes. Yeah. You know, Miss Debbie. <laughs> Y'all best friends? Yeah, we became best friends and Lay's potato chips and all of them. And, you know, my mom didn't have us in the summer program that summer because, you know, I, I didn't want to be around people at that point because I was pretty much uh, traumatized. Well, during that summer, because I wasn't active, I ballooned all the way up to uh, beyond Husky. Uh, I was actually women in women's clothes uh women's size clothes and i was only like 10 uh -huh. and that's where it, it started from there yeah yeah and, and, and the carb addiction, addiction and sugar, sugar addiction, addiction is real it is it is definitely real it's one beast one giant that i had to slay mm -hmm. and well, after well, you sure enough did that Many years of dieting and, you know, starving myself in, in high school, you know, just doing so many different things because, you know, when, you know, your parents mean well, but, you know, I would tell them about what some of the kids would say and, you know, well, you know, they will say little things like, well, why don't you just get the weight off? Why don't you just lose weight? Well, right. you know. They didn't know how to talk, but I would take that literally. I'm like, okay, well, the only thing I know to do is not to eat. So, you right. know, I would starve myself and not eat and, you know, but then turn around and eat the 
and food that was in the house with my mom being a diabetic she had she liked junk food so it was readily always there for me to eat and you know with her working she didn't really cook cook so we ate a lot of stuff like hamburger helper and all that kind of stuff and that's the wrong thing to eat when you are already a a sugar addict or a carb addict which i didn't know i was an addict till lately i thought it was normal the way i ate but no it, yeah. it was bad. i thought something was wrong with me mm -hmm. i didn't know that carb addiction and sugar addiction was as addicting as certain drugs yes that blew my mind it blew my mind as well but then once our mind was blown, I'm sure we studied ourselves because I know I did. And it was like, yes, aha, uh -huh, no wonder, no wonder I couldn't do this. So no wonder I dealt with this. So, so there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with us, girl. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with us. But it yeah. is something wrong with this system in this world that tell us that there's something is wrong with us. And that's yeah. why I go hard against the diet industry the way I do when I talk on my walk and talks because mm. it's so many of us go through this. Yes. And we try to make it seem like it's our fault and it's not our fault. However, it is our problem to solve, that's but it. it is not our fault right. at all. Dr. Dr. Barry always says, it's not your fault, but right. it is your problem. It is your so problem. true. It is your problem. And until we take responsibility about this problem with ourselves first and then help others with our story, that it's gonna always be a, a problem. We gotta start somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. So yep. that's why I love Dr. Barry. I love Dr. Yes. Barry. He's a blessing. Know, we go get to that part about him yes. as well because he's part of the story as well. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's go into what led you to keto carnivore. Did you start low carb? How did you even hear about it? It is so funny that you asked me that because I didn't know any about any of this stuff when I started. Absolutely none of it. It was like okay before this all happened like back 2019 i was so depressed from my best friend caroline passing away mm -hmm. she passed away in october of 2019 mm, i'm so sorry it was such a horrible time because you know I was there when she was battling. And all this led up to this. Oh. She was battling with uh, cancer, but before she had the cancer, she was diagnosed with diabetes. I had to take her to the uh, emergency room and her A1C was like 400 and something. Oh and my goodness. She didn't know she was a diabetic. Mm. And when they came in the room and revealed that you know, you know, we got. I need to talk to you about your diabetes. She was like, "What are you talking about? I'm not diabetic." I mean, she didn't know, and I was like, "What? You didn't know?" And she was like, "No, I didn't know." And, mm -hmm. and so they was talking to her about that. So then she started, you know, taking the medicine for that to try to control that. And then soon after that, she got really, really sick and found out that she was she had cancer. So I was like, what? So all of this was just bam, bam, bam happening to us together in this fight, like, like so quickly, okay. you know, she was trying to help me promoting the business that we were doing and she was feeling sick, sick, sick. And then it's like from that day that I took her to the emergency room, it's just so many things was happening so quickly. And then my husband, he was having some problems with, with himself. Um, you know, he, he always battled with, um, schizophrenia and, um, depression, but he started wow. having some issues himself. So it was just so many things that I had to be like the rock for them. 
Yeah. And, you know, him dealing with that and then her being sick. And then, you know, it's just so many things was happening and house that we were renting was falling apart on us. And the landlord didn't want to fix all the repairs and stuff. And so he decided at the same time that Caroline had was going into hospice at that point to sell the house. So the same day that Caroline passed, I had to move out of my house that I lived in for four years. And so many things was happening at once. So we had to hurry up and find an apartment to move in quickly. And she passed away that day. But then, wow. then we moved. Then when I moved into the apartment that we moved in, I said, Lord, I need some help. You gotta help me, Lord. I, I got I gotta make it through this, you know. So I went on a fast. Hmm. And during the three-day fast, that's when I heard from the Lord that I was special and that I'm the vision queen. So that's my title, the vision. Wow. Okay, hold up. Vision hold up. Hold up. You trying to tell me God talked to you? Well, I didn't know he could talk to me till I did that fast. <laughs> yes. We want the world to know that the Lord still speaks today. Yes, he does. He He's does. alive and well. And he can speak to anyone he wants to. Yes. And, and especially when you were in despair like that. Yes. He stepped in. He, and, you know, he said I was a visionary missionary on the field to help God's people rise and elevate. So I thought it was just me starting a YouTube channel and just motivating people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was going to transform my body and my mind and everything like that till something happened to my son did you want me to go into that yet or please because i'm i'm riveted okay um one day my son was doing some experimenting my son is autistic i only okay. have one son and i didn't find out till later it was because i have pcos we'll talk about that too okay but, um, he's autistic and I've been home for um, ever since he was in kindergarten, taking call center work jobs here and there to help in, make ends meet and stuff so I can, you know, be there for him. Well, during the pandemic, he was home with me all the time. We had we put him on Cyber Academy and mm -hmm. because he was home, you know, he got into I guess getting bored and everything. So he started watching YouTube videos about science and he started experimenting with science and el electricity. Oh, no. And uh, one day he decided to do one of the experiments that he saw on YouTube. Oh boy. Yes. And he's so extremely smart y'all. He's so smart. He's like a, He's going to be an inventor or something someday. Like a savant. Yes, he is. He is. His dad is the same way. And I, and to, I think I am the same, same way, too, when it comes to art and creating stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, he just, he got into something that day. Um, I think he found some, he went outside. In these apartments, and they, you know, when they're remodeling these apartments, they would just throw the uh, appliances out by the dumpster. Well, when he walked the dog one day, he went out there and got something from one of the appliances and took it apart. And um, he snuck it in his room, and something told i know it's the lord he told me to fast that something is weird is going to happen that day oh. and something weird did happen that day uh, a bird hit our window and died and i was like wait a minute i need to lord what's going on okay so i fasted and prayed that day and then at six o'clock that night i heard a surge and I'm like, 
I heard a surge and then he did. I heard a thump and it was him falling in the other room. And I was like, what is going on? So I ran in there and he was on the floor on fire. Electricity went through his left hand because he was doing the experiment and he had a rod in his hand and it burnt through his hand and went through his thigh. And he was surging on the floor on fire. And all I did was run and try to get that out of his head. I mean, I could have died. Yeah. But I don't know how I got that out of his head. But dad ran in and I told him, call 911. And I got that out of his head just in time. But his hand, his whole hand was burnt. His whole hand was burnt and his thigh was burnt. Mm. Um, I was able to roll them over so the fire would go out. And um, he was so scared. He came too. I was like, is he okay? Because I would, you know, he was out for a second. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. My, only son, my only son. You know, and uh, he came too, but he jumped up scared. Like he was scared he was in trouble. I was oh. like, wait a minute. Your head is burnt. And all you can think about yeah. is getting in trouble. So the uh, fire department came and life flighted him to uh, the burn center in Atlanta mm -hmm. called Grady Memorial Hospital. I know you're from, from you came to Atlanta for a while. So mm -hmm. you probably heard of Grady, the best burn center, by the way. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the hospital that I was born in. So it was pretty wow. weird being in the same hospital that I was born in. But um, they took good care of him. I was in there with him for 31 days. And it was Christmas time we spent in there. Mm. And um, I said, Lord, something good got to come out of this. Something good has to come out of this because we already been through so much hell over the years. Yes. How much more hell can a person go through? Lord, I need you. I need your help, Lord. You got to help me. I said, something good got to come out of this. You know, I had to deal with the doctors telling me that, you know, he might lose his hand. I was like, what? So I had to deal with that. You know, the doctor mm. was telling me all I could do is remove dead tissue. I can't make it alive. I said, they don't work miracles. My God can make it alive, though. That's it. And I stood on that. I said, God, he already autistic. He don't need to not have his hand to, you know, I had to deal with that. So a lot of fasting and praying in the hospital with him, but a lot of eating junk food and carbs, too, because, you know, they don't have the best food in the hospital. And at the time, I was trying to be vegan, even though I was heavy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what kind of vegetarian or vegan are you? You can't even get your weight down. I actually gained weight trying to be vegan for a whole <laughs> year because I was eating all this carb garbage that's yes. in there. Boxes, talking about morning star but you know the church that i was going to was seven day adventist so you know they tell us we not supposed to eat meat so i tried right. to comply and do that but but in the hospital they told me because he was a burn patient he need to eat a lot of protein so you know the lady said when well, you go home you know you're gonna have to make him a lot of um meats and eggs and protein and stuff like that because you know his his burns gotta heal you know so i had to be the one to do all the wound care and stuff keep in mind in the hospital i had to sit there and hear my son crying every single day when mm. they were coming there changing his burns this time he he had a lady named Latoya Okia, who's a coach. I found her on YouTube and she started talking about, you know, we're kingdom saints and everything. And she loved Miles Monroe like I do. Mm -hmm. so, so do I, I. gravitated to her. So I was like, me and her got a lot in common. See, God was seeing you people like mm -hmm. a destiny helper. 
that will help you along. And she was like, you know, we need to get our bodies right. You know, you need to go in the beast mode. And she started talking about this beast mode, beast mode. And then she was talking about, we need to do something about our bodies. So she started a program August 1st. And of what year? 90 days. We what got year? On our bodies. This was 2022. Okay. Just last year, y'all. Wow. August 1st. So God said, pay for that and do it. So I paid for it. And I did it, but I didn't do it. It's a good thing you hear God. God, God, I'm telling you, he was leading me because Mm -hmm. I did not know nothing about keto or none of this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he just told me to fast. Well, I started fasting. I wasn't doing what Latoya or any of them was doing. He said, you need to pay and do it, do that so that you have support. Okay. which is important guys so i did that and then as i was doing that i watched her other video say you are the one you are the one so i kept hearing over and over again that i am the one that's gonna make a change i am the one so i wrote on a piece of paper that i am change yes so i wrote that down during the fast and i started journaling and God just kept telling me to fast, but I didn't know when to stop. And so how, to how many days? Stop. How many days were you fasting? Well, by day, I say by day twenty. That's when I found out about about keto. Was so you were doing a full fast for twenty days? Water only. Wow. Before I started the fast, that's when I did that video that you said you saw with the with the blue shirt. Okay, yeah. God, the review uh, needs to rebuild my temple. Mm-hmm. Yes, He would not tell me how long to fast, y'all. He just kept telling me to fast, fast. Ooh. You don't have a revelation yet. You don't have a revelation. So I just kept fasting. He and told you, like, like Abraham, go to a place uh, yes. you don't know yet. Yes, yes. So I'm like, okay. And I told my husband, I said, I don't know how long I'm going to do this. So he was like, you sure about this? I was like, yeah. So he eventually started. Well, he didn't start yet. Okay, so let me go back. Rewind. Okay, so I say maybe about day 14, I found um, Dr. Gymnetis. Have you heard of him? Mm-mm. Predict genetics. Okay. He was saying, You are addicted. You need to, you addicted to junk food. So that's what I was revealed to me that I was addicted to junk food. Mm-hmm. And my husband was like, Wait a minute. He's talking about me too. I said, I know. Look how we, we would eat, we would cook and still want to go get Chick fil A or. Mm-hmm pizza or something and I was a good cook but we wanted the junk food okay so you know so that was revealed to us by that time um my husband was watching so you know he was like well I can't fast like what you doing but you know I need to do something too I can, so I can eat fast. about intermittent fasting <laughs> So we got him intermittent fasting where he would eat like one meal, but I still was fasting. Y'all, I felt another guy that was talking about fasting because I said, Lord, what am I going to do after this fast? I don't want to lose all this weight and then gain it back. So I found another guy that was talking about people who were morbidly obese that was fasting. Um what you call a rolling fast where they would fast their feast their fast their feast okay so he revealed to me to keep doing it after my fast but then i found um i found dr berg okay. talking about keto so I said, keto, that's what we could do. So mm-hmm. I started my husband on keto. And then I started having my son eat 
keto too because he's autistic. And I said we need to help him out too. You know, if mm-hmm. we can help him out. So my son and my husband was eating keto, and plus my son was already eating a lot of protein anyway for his burns. So that mm-hmm. worked out perfectly. So, so this I, was already like, like September. September. Yes, September, y'all. This fast was not over to 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. Yes. 40 days I fasted. How in the world somebody that's totally addicted to junk food could just totally fast like that? I'm telling you, anger. I was so angry with my situation that I was not going to stop until I got the revelation on what I'm going to do for the rest of my life because Mm. I just could not take it anymore. Mm -hmm. I needed to know what was wrong with me. So God revealed that I was an addict during that time. He revealed to me what doctors and coaches to listen to. He revealed to me what I call my divine blueprint and my divine nutritional blueprint. And that's when I started learning more about keto and how we're not supposed to be eating all that carb garbage. I call it garbage and how we are not supposed to eat processed foods. And then um, later on, I didn't know about carnivore yet, but just the keto Mm -hmm. and fasting so after the 40 days was over i ate just keto like one meal a day for seven days and i was eating like my salads and stuff and my you know my ground patties and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and i was like lord i do i do not want to gain this weight back i i i worked too hard for this Weight did you lose just fasting? 44 pounds in 40 days. 44 pounds. Just water fasting. Was that torturous for you? Did I'm glad you asked because I was like, I want to go too fast. I want to some people, some people have a really hard time with fasting. Well, the only thing that was torturous was I had so much. TMI. I had so much diarrhea. I was like, what is going on? You know, yeah. what the world is going on. I mm-hmm. felt weak. Yes. But mm-hmm. I just kept having diarrhea. And I'm like, why am I having diarrhea? I'm not eating anything. But I, I made sure I had my salt water, you know, to try to make sure I had my electrolytes and everything. Because I was okay. like, you know, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And then that's when I found Mindy Pelts. She's very important in this story because okay. when I found Dr. Mindy, she was talking about if you have certain symptoms, you have a sick mitochondrial. So I was like, okay, so I got sick mitochondrial. And then she said, you may have SIBO. So mm-hmm. I'm like, SIBO? That's it. SIBO. It's like Okay, SIBO is like you have bad bacteria that goes to the wrong section in your stomach. Um, like the, the bacteria is supposed to be in your intestines to get in your stomach. And then listening to her made me realize I had a leaky gut. Okay. okay. And that's what she started talking about. Some people who have a leaky gut they need to go carnivore. And I'm like, what is this carnivore she talk about? And then mm-hmm. when I heard her say carnivore, I said, that sounds crazy. You know, that now nah, I'm yeah. I said, that's a little much. I don't think so. So I didn't. <laughs> that's I, not I, the I, I totally dismissed the carnivore idea <laughs> at the time. But when I started doing the, um, after the seven days, because I told y'all I had the diarrhea and all that stuff, that eventually stopped. So Whatever How long little critter it stopped. It stopped like around, I'd say maybe about day day twenty five. Yeah, mm. about day twenty five. That's a long time. 
Yes, but I kept pushing through it because I said, whatever these things is in my gut, they die. It's detoxing. detoxing. It's detoxing. All right, let's, let's fast, fast forward. forward. We got to Dr. Mindy. Yes. Tells you about carnivore. When, when did, did you start, start carnivore? Okay. I heard um, the carb addiction doctor talk about he was carnivore. I said, well, he seemed, he seemed like he kind of normal. He's not, you know. Don't mm -hmm. seem crazy. So maybe I'll Sandy, you know. maybe we could put some pictures of some before as we yes. go to this story and just kind of so people can see the amazing transformation. Yes. All right, and, go ahead. Uh and um yes, when I saw um the carb addiction doctor, he seemed kind of reasonable and he was talking about how he, you know, helped people with uh their carb addiction. And he said that he was carnivore. So I said, maybe this is not such a bad thing. Maybe I need to look into this carnivore thing. So then that's when I looked more into it. And I found Dr. Ken Berry. And uh, when I found Dr. Ken Berry and I listened to, I binged watch him like we would uh, watch Netflix. <laughs> and that man, I tell you, that man, the stuff that he was saying and about how you know some people need to turn down the car the uh the car nah. volume knob mm -hmm. down to zero mm -hmm. and you know maybe you need to do that so i started thinking that because i was like i need to get rid of i don't want to have no more cravings i want to be done with this you yes. know yes so in December of last year, we decided to do, no, November of 22, we decided to do it for a month. We did mm. the challenge. So we did it for a month and got some good results. But um, it was kind of confusing if that was working or was the fasting working? Because right. I told you about the rolling fast. Mm -hmm. well, I was doing 72 hour fast and then I will feast the whole day. Okay. Then I will do 72 hour fast, then I will feast the whole day. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that constantly. And I didn't call it 72 hour fast. I eventually started calling it the Esther, Queen Esther fast. Okay. About Esther and I love Bible. that. She fasted for three days. And mm -hmm. I said, well, since I'm a queen, mm -hmm. that's what I need to be doing. So I did the three days of their feast, the three days of their feast. Wow. And I, I, I stayed on that pattern. I stayed on that pattern consistently. Miss Lady Day, I yeah. never heard the Lord tell me to fast like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, it's like a muscle. Once you yeah. train it, you could do it. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's nothing to me now, you know. Mm -hmm. But um I have to tell you, if it wasn't for keto and carnivore keeping away the cravings, there's no way I yes. could do it. No yeah. way at all. Mm -hmm. And so when I found Dr. Ken, that's when things started really making sense. I heard all the stuff he was saying about all these different studies and the lies that they were saying and um I just kept studying him and the carb addiction doctor. And then I found uh, I found a few other people, Dr. Anthony Chafee, about, mm -hmm. about vegetables, how vegetables are, are um, poisonous. Mm -hmm. People might not agree what he said, but I tell you what, when I stopped eating those, those vegetables, my gut used to bubble up. Like mm. bloat. When I stopped eating those, that went away. He is, he's, he's opened, opened a lot of eyes. eyes. Yes, yes. So during December, I still wanted to eat my chili and all that stuff. So I was still making my chili and all that and, you know, had the bell peppers and the onions and stuff. So I did that during December. But I got really really serious about carnivore in april i said 
I, I got to stop having all these bumps because I have PCOS. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, something got to get rid of this because, you know, even though I'm healed, even though I went through a transformation, I'm sure you guys probably saw the pictures, probably said, is that really her? Could that really be her? I didn't just go through a uh, weight loss journey. I went through a complete transformation. Yeah. Where everything changed. My mind, my mindset, uh, the way I saw myself, my perception of everything totally changed. I would be able to be behind this camera if I was the way I used to be, you know, Mm -hmm. but everything changed and just listening to all these doctors and listening to the main one I almost forgot Jason Fong that's what oh, yeah. to fasting yeah I found him doing the 40 day fast mm. so um reading his books and listening to obesity code and um diabetes code made me realize that my divine nutritional blueprint is what I call it. The way I eat, like, you know how um, Ken Berry says, uh, the proper human diet. Mm -hmm. Well, I call it my divine nutritional blueprint because every Bible tell us what to eat. Mm -hmm. And I ain't see nothing in there about no wheat, uh, carb, garbage, junk. I ain't see that in there. I ain't see that. (laughs) in there okay no they, no no, it, no impossible burgers nope nope i ain't see that in there you know <laughs> god created us you yeah. know he yeah. created our dna our our whole blueprint okay so it's he, amazing you know, how he created the body to yeah. heal and regenerate in yeah. such a way if it's given the proper nutrition the proper nutrition and that's it and the fasting and the autophagy got rid of the old dead cells and all mm. of the old junk that I've eaten for the past 43 years at the same time. And I was eating real food, the mm-hmm. proper human diet to rebuild the building blocks of my cells to mm-hmm. rebuild me again, because I couldn't go through life feeling like that before already 43 years old having sciatic pain down my leg 275 pounds and i'm only five foot one wow you know going through that and you know feeling weak and tired all the time where i have to take a a, a afternoon nap now Mm -hmm. when i take a nap it's because i want to you know but i have to take a nap all the time and you know, my skin was all uh, botchy and, and mm-hmm. uh, dry spots, but then have big, huge PCOS pimples just popping up all over my face and not knowing when I would have a period. It was mm-hmm. just crazy. I could go through that no more. I was angry. Yeah. And like I said in my video, sometimes you have to become angry. Yes, or you can make a change. And a Dave team Ramsey team says that yeah. change doesn't come until you get sick and tired yeah. of being sick and tired. Well, guess what? I was way past that. It was to the point where some people probably would say, "Oh, you would say." Well, guess what? Sometimes you have to be to make a change. Mm -hmm. The world was say you and say, and I guess I was because I had to do something. I couldn't do it no more. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live that way anymore, you know. And my husband followed me, you know. He did did it with you, carnivore? He yes, yes, and we're still carnivore now. He lost 80 almost 90 pounds. You You got got a new man, man, this lady Jay. Yes, I did. And he got him a new queen. All right. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Now, I have a question for you. Yeah. What role did exercise play in all of this, in your journey? Well, it's funny that you asked, and I'm glad that you asked that because I want people to understand. 
You cannot exercise a bad diet. Yes. You've got to change what you are putting in your mouth first. I'm sorry. You have to. <laughs> because I'm telling you this. If you try to run and go to the gym and do all this exercise while you still big or obese mm -hmm. like I was, you going to injure yourself, first of all. Yes. Because your body's going to be like, what is going on? You going to pull something or something? Because mm -hmm. I did that to my knee. Mm -hmm. um, trying to do too much. Trying to get on the elliptical and all this stuff. Y'all saw a picture of me big on the elliptical, but I ended up hurting myself. Mm -hmm. So you got to start by doing the intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and changing the way you eat first. Yes. Because you got to control that hunger that, that you know, if, especially if you're an addict, you got to control those sugar cravings because if you try to exercise and, and you know, do all of that, you got to first increase your hunger even more. Mm -hmm. And that's going to work against you because the more you exercise and burn calories, the more you're going to want to eat. Okay, I've got another question. When you would eat, because you were fasting a lot, how much would you eat? Did you count calories? Were you like tracking? Or would you just like, I'm going to just eat once a day? Or, or and how much would you eat? Well, when before I knew about carnivore, you know, when I was trying to do keto, I said, you know, I'm just going to do the old man. And that wasn't enough. But when I found out carnivore, I didn't count nothing. I ate as much as I want to, as much, nice. as, much as much. You're my kind of woman. Steak and eggs and yes. uh, as much as I want. My beef bacon that I found at Walmart. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. oh, beef bacon is so good. I don't eat pork, but okay. I eat beef. And I, I eat as much as I want. I don't count. I would count on my fitness pal but i'm not counting so i can know how many calories i'm eating you're just tracking food in diary, you know and i eat the same i you know i think people get messed up when they be like you know people all the time saying can you send me a meal plan no just yes. eat a just eat Yes. Our ancestors didn't how have many ounces of this and yes that's that's the diet industry got our minds all uh, jacked yes. like that you know no mm -hmm. when our ancestors went and hunted you think they took the skin off the meat you think they i mean come on a lot of this stuff makes me angry because it's like when did we lose our common mm -hmm. sense you know mm -hmm. we didn't have calorie counters we didn't have a pedometer right how many steps we did no, mm -hmm. we got out there and hunted for the food, and then we killed it, and we gorged on it till we fell out. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And some days we didn't catch anything, so we fasted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we didn't catch anything every day, mm -hmm. and we didn't eat fruit all the time. Fruit was seasonal, right? So right. every now and then we may have uh, ate. You know, honey, if we did eat that stuff, I don't, I don't mess with that. And they were, they were smaller, smaller and they, and they were, were injected, injected with, with things and made right in the science lab. And right, right. We didn't eat Frankenstein food. And right. That's what this junk is. This stuff is yeah. made in a lab where they formulate the fat, salt, and the sugar just right to hook you. Mm -hmm. And I, I was one of them. I was hooked. I had to have it. I had to have my Chip fil A. I had to, I don't care what bill I didn't pay. I had to have it. That's how bad it was, y'all. It was yeah. I had and who knew that you could eat as much as you do and it's all right. Right. And you know when we did eat the junk food, because I know you remember when we did oh, yeah. eat the junk food, we were never full. Yes. We were never full. We would eat it in this like was next we were mm -hmm. never full but now i eat and i'm satisfied 
Mm-hmm. And I don't have to worry about counting anything. I just yeah. eat what I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat my eggs. I'm going to eat my bacon. I'm going to eat my steak. I'm going to eat whatever I'm going to eat. And I don't have to worry about counting a thing. And people don't understand that. Well, you try to explain that to them. They're like, that doesn't make any sense. But yet right. you're still watching the transformation that I'm doing. Yeah. Aren't you a little bit curious at this point? You saw me before. You see mm-hmm. me now. What you wait for? Mm-hmm. But you know, people, like I said, they got to get angry like I did. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's somebody out there who's watching right now and they have had it. I mean, they're angry just like you were, Miss Lady Tay. And you didn't have gastric bypass surgery. And nope. you, what would you tell them? Do one, two, three. This is what you got to do. Write down your vision and make it play on mm. the vision, please. So I have to tell you that you have to write down such a detail on paper or the person you want to become. From the way she look, mm. the way she dress, the way she carry herself. That's so good. And I don't care how elaborate it seemed to you. You write it down because God gave you that vision of the person he created you to be. And even though it seems so far away and so weird, he has your divine blueprint, baby. Mm -hmm. Write down that vision on paper. Get you a journal. Get you a journal. Write down the stuff she likes to do, what she likes to wear, where you want to go, what things you want to do. Write it in such detail because where you going to go next you going to have to go back and keep reading that over and over again to keep you mm-hmm. running, first of all. Second of all, if you're in a situation that I was in where you just have to make a change, you need to write down what would happen if you don't make that change. you got to write that down. I came to the conclusion that the way that I was going, I just might not see my 80th or 70th birthday. You don't see too many people that are morbidly, severely obese that big. So you have to write down what would happen if I don't make a change. Okay. And then write down really big that I am change and become change. And as soon as I said that, that's when change started happening. Mm. And don't listen to no one else. Don't, you might not even need to tell nobody else right away. Cause right. I didn't even tell my family anything. I just went dark, cut off social media for a while and only watch these doctors that I'm telling you guys about. Mm-hmm. I thought that to be really important, important too. too. Yes. You got to keep them out of your business because first of all, the ones that mean well going to be worried about you. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't eat that negative chatter because they don't understand. They're not in your body. They don't know what you go through. You know, mm-hmm. I realized when I was in the hospital with my son, and I, I don't have no remorse or, or feel any way about anybody. I love everybody. But it was nobody but me and him and my husband in that hospital. Only one person came to visit us. Okay. Mm-hmm. So why include all those people? What you going through, what you going through, you know what you going through. Mm-hmm. Write that vision down, make it plain, read it every day, say, I am changed. I'm going to do do this and I'm going to change my life. Mm-hmm. And you will. God will start leading you to the right people, to the right places. You watching this video right now. 
that's one thing right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, we right now, your destiny help us. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm here for you. And Martha's here for you. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, you could reach out to either one of us. But, yeah. you know, you have to make a decision. One vision and one decision can change your whole destiny. And you owe that to yourself. So come on, baby. The world waiting for you. We wait for you to manifest. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Miss Lady Tate, where can anybody find you if they're interested in hearing you, going to your YouTube? Tell them where to find you. You can find my channel, um, YouTube at Kingdom Queen Talk. Because I'm a Kingdom Queen and I talk. And I talk a lot about, I talk about the Lord and I also talking about how they, this dye industry is really uh, pulling a wool over our eyes. Don't want us mm -hmm. to be free. And I talk about Big Pharma and pretty yes. soon, like Martha, I'm yes. going to have my own podcast on that channel talking about your body is your palace. Amen. And your mind is God's temple. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. And you can also find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Kingdom Queen Talk. So you can find me that way too. And you can also find me um, on, on uh, Facebook. Just Lady Tay Division Queen. Awesome. And I'll be linking in the description all of those for you guys. Guys. Yes. I have something to tell you, okay? Don't wait for the voice of God. We are the voice no. of God for you, okay? <laughs> Do this Don't thing. wait. Don't Start wait for no me. Carbs. Do fasting. Do keto. Do carnivore. Do yes. something. Do something. To, to Start change somewhere. your life. life. Start, Start small, small if you need to. If you need to. Find, a tribe. Yeah. Find a tribe. And if you don't and have if one, you don't have one, we'll be your we'll tribe. Be your tribe. Write, to write to us. Messages. messages. I'm already, already getting questions. questions. Martha, Martha, how about, how about this? this? How do I, how do, do, I this? do this? I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged. Don't, don't be discouraged. You don't you need to walk this all by yourself. We'll walk it with you. Yes. Miss Lady family. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for being, being with us very and sharing your story. You're very, very welcome. Remember, guys, if you can think it, you can see it. And if you can see it, you can be it, baby. Go on and write that vision down. Make it yes. plain. And go on and do it. Just run after it. Just run after it, okay? I love, I love it. it. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. I appreciate, appreciate you. you. We'll see you, we'll see you next time. time.